Living Constitution. Without taking much time, I will request Justice Roshan Dalby to speak not only from her book, The Bird Eye View, but even otherwise, we know her passion for taking issues of the gender law perspective. Before we request Justice Roshan Dalvi for a moment, I will just share the book. Those who have missed it, though, we will share the link in the YouTube link. This is Woman, Her Trials in the Tramps. This is the insights from which she will give her the further insights. And over to you, Justice Roshan Dalvi. And thank you once again, Justice Esther in the Bhatt, for the insightful session. And as usual, it was, it's always a pleasure reading her, his judgments. But to hear, it's a, they say that 2D vision is different and 3D vision is entirely different. And to hear him straight talking from straight from his heart, it's always a pleasure. Over to you, Justice Roshan. Good evening, Justice Bhatt. Thank you for this overall and exhaustive view of gender in our laws. It was, it was really so nice. I've taken down notes. And we are all enriched. What I wanted to tell in this is not about the chapters relating to the historic uh, aspect of gender laws and today's view of how differently we can see several of these uh, aspects. This would be overlapping with Justice Bud's erudite lecture. I will take you to the social perspectives. Now, what I would want to tell you is that in all societies, in all communities, at all times, there have been people who have not been able to grapple with this view of complete gender equality, treating men, women entirely equally. It just doesn't happen. And therefore, there are so many perspectives that we come across which amaze us. This has happened with me. And you find, oh yeah, even here, there is a gender perspective. The latest of these cases, you know, in the employment tribunal in the UK last week, the employment tribunal has held that bald men being called bald is uh, sexual harassment. The employer called the employee who was going to be dismissed bald because he was bald. And the court held that this is not an attribute of age. It is an attribute of gender because mostly men are bald. And just as you would not speak about, say, women's organs, you cannot speak about men's baldness. So you see, this is how wide it is. And every time I feel, oh, wow, even this is an aspect of gender. Now, we go back one century. In 1920s, there was this women's rights movement for voting rights in America. And Edgar Hoover, who was the president of the FBI and no, no less, said that these women are national threat, national security threat. 100 years afterwards, in 2020, when they celebrated the centenary of women's voting rights, they recalled this version. So you see how the American society has moved from 1920 to 2020. Even today in American society, the gender equality is not completely equal. Uh, uh, Times Review, which was held of all the nations, put the Scandinavian countries first, followed by Canada and certain Western European countries. And America comes 10th. Why? Because America fell short for paternity leave. Various other countries give maternity as well as paternity leave. America does not. In America, there is what is called paternity bonus and maternity um, it is a particular expression. I'll just uh, tell you. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that because I don't want to waste time. So this paternity leave is not granted. And that is one of the attributes of gender equality. Um, Sudha Murthy has said that when she attended some conference on gender, in, the, uh, in Norway, 
she found that women in Norway are far, far superior and have a lot of confidence which other women don't have. And she thought that India would be somewhere in the middle when this survey was taken. And she was astounded to find that India was just above Pakistan and below Saudi Arabia and China. You see, now we, we are also surprised. We don't feel it like this. But what we don't realize is that you and me sitting here in this, uh, in this webinar are far above millions in our country. And the country is judged not by our status, but, but by the status of those millions. And therefore, when we work, we have to continue to work on this subject, no matter that you and I have equal rights, equal position, equal opportunities, and everything equal. It's not so everywhere. So I would like to tell you some very interesting aspects in various countries. Now, in India, and I've written about that in both my books, and because I've got a chapter on gender even in my first book. Uh, surprisingly, we found that, you know, there's eye donations which are made in eye camps and there is cataract operations for women. There, there are eye camps and they conduct hundreds of cataract operations. When they did some survey, they found that mostly women take advantage of these. And when they did more research after feeling very happy about it, they found why is it so? It is because a man who has to take care of his mother and father, who has to pay for his mother and father or his grandmother and grandfather, always chooses his father over his mother to do surgery, which is a paid surgery. So the father has already got his cataract removed, but the mother's cataract is not removed. The grandmother's cataract is not removed until the eye camp comes in that, uh, in that community, society, village, whatever. And then she is sent for a free cataract operation. And when these men were interviewed, they said, yes, my father is retired. He reads newspapers, he sees TV, he, he talks with his neighbors, he needs his eyes. Mother only cooks. She doesn't need her eyes. Let me give you another example of women who are children, the girl children. Now we have got in our state schools, municipal schools or government schools, whatever you call it, that a girl's education is free up to standard 10 and the boy's education is free up to some standard four or whatever. That is because boys are always sent to school and girls are not. So therefore there is this gender balance, as they say. You must balance everything so as to give parent. All right. Now, why is this required? It is required because a girl child is dropped out of school compulsorily and a boy child continues in school. Why does that happen? That happens because she has to go and collect firewood. She has to cook in the house. She becomes a, she comes of puberty age and has to be protected, sort of, as they say. Girl child is not sent. When there was this nuclear deal, you know, when Manmohan Singh was the president of India and Bill Clinton was on the other side, Bush was on the other side, and we had this new civilian nuclear treaty, people were talking about the environmental hazards. But people who were dealing with gender rights and especially gender rights of these kind of marginalized societies where women and girls are not sent to school also, they said that if we have this nuclear um, energy, and we can create electrification of various villages which are not yet electrified. Girl children will not be sent to collect firewood. It will be an environmental hazard to collect firewood, but, and it will be an environmental kind of you know, protection if we don't fell so many trees. The girls will not be molested in the forest when they go to collect firewood. And they would be taking on electricity and studying. So, you know, these things were not thought of. Let me give you another example. There was a recession. Recession in America and in the whole world, and it took over in 2008. Why was this recession? There were 
uh, they were uh, yeah, researching and investigating. They found that most of the financial consultants were men. There were no women finan financial consultants. And they realized that if the financial consultants were women, they would have wanted to invest in education, in insurance, in savings, etc. But the men didn't do that. And there are two lovely books written by Gillian Tate and Sarah Winfield. Women of the Street, and that street is Wall Street. And one is Fool's Gold, which finds out how foolish you were not to have diversity, even in the corporate culture. And now they have got in Germany, corporate boards, which require what we call a quota, but what they call, of course, on merit, that there, there should be women selected on merit, even on the board of all companies. So this is how history progresses. A very striking example I would give, and it might bring a smile to your face. The ACs in all offices are calibrated for the combustion and metabolism level of men. Therefore, women always feel very cold in those kind of situations. The tables and chairs also in certain companies are actually sort of, you know, uh, carpentry-wise made for men. And when a woman comes and sits, they will have to be modified. So much so that the astronauts' suits were tailored and measured for men. And therefore, when women astronauts went into space at one time, the space uh, program had to be postponed because their space suits had to be altered. Because you can't wear bigger suits in this non-gravity kind of atmosphere. It has to fit. These, these are those perspectives. And when we come across you know, these perspectives in society, what we feel is that this is because no thought is given to what could be gender. And when we are going to only study laws relating to gender and only cases relating to gender, we are going to have only that focus approach. It is not going to be an open-ended approach. And my purpose of writing this book is to see that in everyday life, for everyday nuances, we consider gender as one important factor. Now, let us go to a situation of war. In a war, they say in every war, women and children disproportionately suffer. There are those ghettos and there are those uh, bunkers which are meant for women, children, and old men. And this was even in the Iraq war. What happened was that in Amiria, that shelter was bombed. And then they realized that it was not some kind of a terrorist uh, activity. It was a basement shelter for protection of women, children, and old men. And so many children died in that bombing, which was done by America, of course, in Iraq. Now in Bosnia, when there was this war, there was one hour relaxation of curfew. In that one hour, you have to do whatever that you have to do. The men could finish their work. They could get groceries, etc., and come home. But the women could not finish their work outside. They had to go to the riverside to wash clothes. They have to go and do so many things outside. So the women came together and said, no, one hour is not enough. We want relaxation of curfew for two hours. Then, it, then they demanded three hours. Then they demanded four hours. And ultimately, there was one hour of war and four hours of relaxation of curfew. So this is what women can do. And for peace, they say no peace, no women, no peace. In countries like Africa, when there are these armed conflicts between certain countries, and there are those uh, tribals, two tribes fighting with one another, the women realize, what are we fighting for? What is going to come to our children? So in one of these kind of conflicts, there was a meeting in the presidential palace. They went and locked up the palace from outside. And they said, until you come to a conclusion, on peace, we will not allow you to come out. And in another instance, the women all came together and decided no sex until peace. 
So everyone decided we will not have sex with our husbands. Both these countries had peace. There are amazing ways in which women can contribute. Now we come to an all-round thing. I have devoted a chapter called Around the World. And I have shown various instances from around the world, A to Z. Let's begin with A, in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, women had to go long distances to collect water from the wells. So some NGOs who were working, and this was long before the Taliban takeover now, the NGOs who were working uh, said, we will construct some wells. So they constructed some tube wells at various places. The women broke them up. They wanted to go out because in that society where they were not allowed to go out, this was their only outing. In India, some of the NGOs wanted to help women to sort of, you know, have functional literacy. So these women who are uh, working for it, they were all women like you and me. They were very well placed in society. They had their time from four o'clock to six o'clock or so, which could be free. They were not free in the morning time with their families, et cetera, or their careers or whatever. And in the evening time, they wanted their evenings free. But the women could not come for all those functional literacy courses because they said, These are the constraints of women. Under these constraints, they come up and stand tall with the men. And that is the aspect which must be understood if you're going to give a good judgment, if you're going to fight a good case. Because unless you understand that, these perspectives will not come out. In Africa, they were doing this kind of a vocational guidance training. And they said that it would have been a course of one week, but one week only if we had a full day course. Women could not come for that course. That course got completed after six months and women got their share of empowerment. In Africa, there are some communities where the land belongs to the man, but the crops belong to the woman. So when a woman comes and marries in, the, in a man's house in a society, she will never own the property. But because she owns the crops, if the man comes home drunk, she can tell the man, this is my crop which I have put on the table. You will not get to eat. This is what they have done actually. So these are the ways in which they have got empowerment. A very unique way in Kenya is that when a young girl becomes a single mother or becomes a widow and then becomes a single mother or whatever, and is not capable of really taking on the world, there are many other women who are older women. They are from a higher class. And they, because they are older, they are kind of semi-retired or whatever. They join these women. It is an asexual union, but it is a union where the young girl gets empowerment as well as protection by the old person, and the old person gets the company of the young person. It's such a, it's such a unique way of starting a family which is asexual. We are not talking about genders, but yet two women come together like this. In Kosovo, when... Um, man dies without a son, the daughter can claim to be a son. So she applies to what we would call a panchayat, but whatever is their village council. And she says, I will be the man of the family. She is allowed to be the man of the family. She then starts owning property, but she cannot only vote in the village council. She can even, she can even appear in the village council and take part, but not vote. But she has to lead a chaste life. She can thereafter not marry and not have children. So again, you see, you give one way some empowerment and I would say one way some kind of disability. In Pakistan, there are many girls who are taken as Chinese brides. And especially after this border road, which has come up, there is a kind of human trafficking between Pakistan and China. 
the girls are married off mainly from poor Christian families to the Chinese persons. And then they find themselves either in the fields to work or actually traffic for sex. Um, you see, if you take other examples, then in Japan, the first paternity leave started in Japan. It was called acumen. Japanese society is still under wraps for, for gender. It's not a very open society. The emperor, when he takes uh, oath to be the king, to be the emperor, he, his uh, darbar does not have a woman. The empress cannot come. Japan now shows that it wants to be gender equal and has made some laws. Last year, in the medical college, several women who applied and were got, getting good marks, their marks were fudged such that then they will not become doctors. This is another unique way in which you just leave aside gender. In FBI, as late as in the last decade, they were, of course, showing that they would employ as their um, agents, men as well as women. But in the examination that had to take place, the last examination was some very heavy physical exercise. And one woman could not cope. The man failed her. And then he was heard speaking to his colleagues. I have washed out one female. This happened in America some years ago. It is in the crime files of FBI from where I've taken that. Now let's go to some of the triumphs of them. There is a whole team which has gone to Antarctica, a woman's team, only women, and they have survived and come back. Then after one Indian British women, Indian born British woman, Chandi Kaur, she has gone to the South Pole alone. And they have made research and said that if you are going to take women as well as men, but give them equal training in physical exercises, they will be able to withstand any of these physical problems. Last week, one police officer has gone to Mount Everest. She's a lady. She has met me when I went on a Himalayan trek, not, not anywhere close to Mount Everest. And she actually looked like a boy. And she said that we have to undergo one month's training. She was in the flight with me on 2nd of April. They had to go in a window between 12th to 15th of May to reach Everest because they, they can go only on certain days when they find that the weather would be fine, etc. And they said, we have to go one month before because we have to have this rigorous training. It costs some 36 lakhs out of which some 18 lakhs go to the Nepalese government by way of royalty. Our police officer woman has gone this year. There was a crew, an entirely Indian women crew, which has sailed around the world, six continents. They have done their own work of even overhauling their own boats and repairing them. So there is nothing that women cannot do. During the COVID also, some women's traits, which were hitherto unknown, came out. There is one woman who climbs coconut trees. Why? Because she was an engineer. Her father used to climb coconut trees. When in, during COVID, she was laid off and did not have any work to do. She saw that her father is climbing trees. She said, why should I not climb? And she, being an engineer, prepared certain equipments good enough for climbing trees easily. Now she climbs trees and her father does not. There is a woman from Orissa who is called the Queen of Transmission Towers. She goes up this transmission towers that we know of uh, various uh, phone companies. We only know how to hold our phones. We don't really care to see that. She goes and repairs them. When she started, people were abusing her. Now they call her the queen of transmission towers. She can repair any of those towers standing herself. We know that in Haryana, there is a paro system, 
Paro means from far. Why is this system? Because they have such a skewed sex ratio because they didn't want any females and they were, uh, there was so much of female feticide that now they are taking brides from outside, especially from Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, etc. They are called Paro. They are left like that. They are brought in as brides, but not treated as wives. They are treated as servants. They live there. There is still the veil system. That is the gungat that they have. Now there is one lady, Asha Khedar, and she entered politics. And she also had to pull her gungat when she started. But the people in Haryana said that our leader should not bear, bear a gungat and told her to remove her veil. And she goes now in all places giving lectures as a politician. In Madhya Pradesh, there is a man who considers reverse dowry as his custom. And this custom is prevalent in some um, communities where they give some money to the father of the bride. So it is not Kanyadan where the father sort of donates his daughter to the husband. It is vice versa that the husband gives money to the father to take the bride. And this man says, I will take only 525 rupees from my father. There are, uh, there are other sects in Madhya Pradesh itself where they sell their girls specially for prostitution. And some of our NGOs are working to get them out of that trafficking circle. So you see, these are the two communities in the same state. Different ones. In Haryana, where I've told you some of the other stories, I came to know that there is a story where for the birth of every girl, they plant 11 trees. The community gives 10,000 rupees. The parents give 11,000 rupees. And this is used for the girls' education. So they have plants as well as girls. Now, these are some of these perspectives that I have put in my book. They are gender perspectives. There are various gender perceptions. These perceptions come up right from the childhood. In the beginning, when you say a boy must play with a ball and a girl must play with a doll, you are making a mistake. It is a gender perspective. A girl will choose and the boy will choose. But parents need not choose. And certainly not, of course, the state, as they chose in the case of Anuj Gar, which Justice uh, uh, Bhatt just told us about that you cannot go after 10 o'clock. No, it is for the girl herself to decide. She doesn't want to go, it's fine. Most of the girls won't want to go. I wouldn't want to go. Why would I? I want to rest. But there may be a girl who will say, my brother will pick me up. There may be a, a club where the girl goes with, who will provide transport. She may be living very close to some place of work. How can then the state or even the parents say, no, you cannot do this. She must decide for her own life. So you see, these are the perspectives I've given. There are two chapters on law and on the lateral thinking of law. Because there are so many laws, gender laws, which now require us to think laterally, to think differently in feminist criminology. There is one such chapter. As I told you, I've got a whole chapter on war zone and peace. And there is another chapter on around the world, aside from, of course, trials and triumphs. I would not like to take you to all of those chapters, but if you read my book, it's available on Amazon. It's available, it will be available as an ebook by the end of the month. Ebook will be, of course, cheaper. Uh, thank you. If there is anything that you would want to know on these gender perspectives, I would answer. But I would like to end with one joke which I have put in the book. A father comes home and tells his son, come, we will go for a weekend. It was a Friday evening. And the son, uh, he tells the son, we'll go to a hotel. And the son says, Papa, what is a hotel? He's a four-year-old child. And the Papa says, oh, a hotel is a place where they will give us a lovely room. They will make our beds. They'll give us coffee. We will go down and go to the swimming pool. We'll have jacuzzi. We will play. Uh, Karam, we will have food uh, that, that they will serve us, coffee that they will serve us. So the boy says, then why is mama coming along? This boy, aged four, 
has seen his mama do all this and he finds it nothing great that he goes to the hotel his mama can need not be there if the hotel would be there now if this boy grows up and becomes a lawyer or a judge he is not going to be able to give us judgments as justice but and other judges have given and therefore we must from the beginning inculcate in our children the respect for gender i would say they say beti bachao beti padhao i would say beta padhao beti bachao automatically thank you how nicely you have put it across that's they say it's the only the perspective how one can think about it everything as they say uh, what shakespeare had said nothing is good or bad but your thinking makes it so so it's all the and one of the quote had read it out it said that once the mother is well read she also inculcates the entire family so they yes. say that the empowerment is through women and automatically the entire family and the entire society moves forward before we take to the question and answers uh, we will request justice vimla a former judge from madras high court we are too glad that she has joined with us and we all know that how knowledgeable she is and she has taken session with us to share her insights because she is already heading the law commission what suggestions are coming forth especially in the gender perspective as justice roshan dalvi and justice s ravindra bhat have already during the session enlightened us how the journey of the gender has gone and as rightly as the topic also comes across the book the trials and trumps that is the best thing which can be coming forward or do you justice vimla for your insights from Thank today's you. session and what has her changes Thank you, Vikas. After the erudite presentation by Honorable Justice uh, Butt and uh, elite presentation by Justice Roshan Dalvi, I don't think I can speak out. But uh, having requested me to uh, speak, I will just make a few bullet points uh, uh, regarding whatever uh, is the scenario in Tamil Nadu, especially in India. Um, a very good uh, presentations on gender justice, gender perspectives. Uh, we are really. Um, empowered we feel empowered and uh, uh, a few things uh, when gandhi ji said i uh, see happy with the india attaining independence he said i will accept india has uh, achieved this independence only when women wearing jewels were able to walk out during night now that we are not able to live inside the house that is the scenario in which we are moving regarding so far as gender is concerned many women feel that it is safe to be in the state than to be at home because the children their children are also getting affected and, and this is how uh, we are placed now during this pandemic especially the women were in the forefront uh, meaning thereby that the nurses were in the forefront doing all kind of services leaving their children at home still the uh, two um, problem for women was unwanted pregnancies by the husband to the wife given and the second thing is too many child marriages these are the two problems that we have encountered during this uh, pandemic and when we go to family court and we see the mutual consent petitions and uh, my sister had been the family court judge also and uh, the most unjustified compromises the, the indirect compromise is one thing but the indirect compromise is something else where the women accept that they can retain the husband side can retain season of properties they need not give any share but in in fact in the indian law there is no equity or equality so far as the right to property for a married woman is concerned as so far as my knowledge goes it is only in kenya that uh, the law provides for provides as unless otherwise rebutted all properties acquired during and after marriage is deemed to be the property of both the husband and wife and on divorce they are entitled to equal share of partition so, so the, such kind of law is not available the indian law only provides for division of property that is given at the time of marriage uh, and the section 27 of the hindu marriage act and uh, no equity or equality in the law providing for property the most um, irritating or may may say the most hurting scenario in india whenever the, any injustice is happening to women women immediately they do not want to fight it out uh, for example after the introduction of the pakso whenever there is an allegation that a particular girl child is put to harassment say sexual harassment immediately the elders in the home choose to stop the women from going for education stop the girl from education and they cut off all the benefits 
instead of fighting the injustice that is happening to the girl child therefore we are afraid even to talk about the good law that is made available in the benefit of this gender uh, you know uh, in a in a case of recruitment uh, in which i was also a recruitment uh, board the, after the final selection or till just before the announcement of the uh, candidates where 60% of women were them chosen were women immediately you know the other two partners sitting along with me he was telling me his sister should should be reconsider it is not advisable to give 60% to the women i was just wondering on marriage they were selected what are you talking about then they then they said not possible should not they were insisting they, then i said what could be the reason that is emanating from the they said no no man if more women are recruited they will be asking for maternity leave they will go on leave the institution will suffer therefore we cannot give 60% to women and even though the beneficial laws are there the benefit is not in, not reaching women uh, only because women are you know, still not getting sufficient awareness to fight it out it is time that this kind of book by justice roshan dalvi and this kind of erudite and scholarly speeches by justice but and uh, the promotion of these event by vikas and uh, th- this kind of activities will promote awareness and it will give some kind of courage for women to fight it out thank you very much thank you ma'am uh, we could never better sum up with that and the way you have actually spoken up like what we say that each one plant one so if each one of us takes an endeavor that we should there should be a gender sensitization i think we will have a society like what you said what gandhi gandhi ji had dreamt of and the way the society has evolved we are moving towards the positive developments positive developments of law since we are running short of time only i will take one question which we normally speak what are the subordinate legislations relating to gender and how are they dealt with by the courts since both of you have a vast experience i will ask justice roshan dalvi and then uh you'll ask justice vimla being in the law commission what are your takes on this particular aspect this um, subordinate legislations because are very intriguing one I, i'll give you by way of examples uh Uh, under the service rules if a man marries for the second time he is dismissed a man was dismissed and the dismissal was upheld now this is a very gender positive rule similarly there is a rule that uh, if you have three children you cannot get government accommodation now not many people understand this rule actually they feel oh my what about it there is one matter which goes on with where the other perspective is that the child says that i am not supposed to be blamed how, how can i help it that i am the third child yes the child must get all benefits but not the parents and i would call it a gender positive rule because this would show that you are seeing that you can you don't have to produce a litter a woman goes through all of this and just because you don't have a son you have the third child and the fourth child and the fifth child until you try try and try again is wrong and this kind of a rule which has been upheld by the supreme court is a very good judgment now there are certain things which can be abused also there was a rule that if women uh, are litigants then women litigants will not pay court fees it was in maharashtra so many men file the suit as the power of attorney holder of the wife and then said that we will take instructions of the wife that we will appear in the court and they did not pay court fees then thereafter the rule was amended and this is now only relating to maintenance for the women now this maintenance aspect has been very differently interpreted in bombay high court one judge held that when a woman applies for heirship certificate to obtain the pension of uh, the, the pension and other retirement benefits of her hus- uh, husband when she has become a widow he said there there need be no um, court fee paid because this pension and the retirement benefits is meant for her maintenance when she becomes a widow drawing upon that another woman who was very well placed and who, who became a widow 
and who wanted to apply for a succession certificate for the DMAT account of her husband, in which he owned shares of numerous companies to the tune of certain crores of rupees, was not allowed because it was held that this is not for her maintenance. It is in addition to her maintenance. She can maintain herself. So this is how subordinate legislations help. There is a uh, rule that uh, for any sale of any property or any lease by or to a woman, there will be 1% less um, stamp duty. Now, this is a very gender positive rule. It is in favor of women and children. It sort of will augur for the benefit of women and some women will be able to take up some properties which otherwise would not. This is a good gender uh, uh, subordinate legislation. There are others also which I have kept in my book. I think I can stop your giving you examples. Now also to Justice Vimla, what are your takes on this? I, I endorse uh, what uh, Justice has, uh, has spoken. And there, despite the gender positive rules, um, the administrative side also passes certain regulations and certain kind of instructions. There are in, uh, instructions uh, by the our chief minister in Tamil Nadu is uh, women can travel without paying any uh, fare for the bus. Uh, you may wonder how it is relating to gender justice because uh, supposing a woman comes to the court seeking maintenance, she may not have sufficient money for travel. If this kind of free travel is allowed, then it is helpful for them to attend the court very frequently that as and when it is needed. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, rules that is, uh, it is quite uh, helpful for women. But uh, I have seen only people breaking rules so that uh, women should not get anything, even if there are rules. Article 15, especially with reference to Article 15.3 and the reservation and the horizontal reservation, is an attempt by the government, the constitutional makers, and in the today's scenario also, we see so much law coming forth. Here, you know, 33% rules that is there, yes. uh, 33%, more than 33% women get elected for Punjab, local, made it that local bodies also. As I said, no, the recently, uh, uh, my husband got a brief where the uh, a male person came and he said he wanted anticipatory bail. He said, why, the, what is the reason for anticipatory bail? He said, I want to preside, uh, I have to preside, over, this is exactly the sentence, I have to preside over this drama sabha, that is, Meaning, it is a village sabha, he has to participate. Uh, the same ground was also uh, put in the bail application and the court was not inclined to and it was dismissed. During the second time, uh, the, the man was saying the same ground. And uh, incidentally, he said, uh, last time also my wife was finding it very difficult. Meaning thereby, wife is the president and he says in the place of the wife, he is ruling. That is the meaning of it. That is how these oh. rules are uh, more noted for breach than for observance. Yes. That is the trouble. That is the problem. But as they say that if the mindset improves, everything changes. Yes, and yes. I am reminded of that old order change at yielding place to new. This reservation of 13, 33%, Article 15, subplot 3, horizontal reservation in for the purposes of ladies, are the positive steps which the central government and the state government span India are doing. And... We are all positive on this thought process while we leave for today that we will have a society which will usher for the better, betterment. And tomorrow's friends, the session would be challenges for lawyers with the emerging trends. That is by Rajiv N. Law Shaw, a former judge from Delhi High Court to stay connected with us at 8 p uh, 6 p.m. And after the session, I will connect with Justice Vimla for her sessions because they are always sessions which are enriching. And thank you, Justice Roshan Dalvi. I can say that her Trials and Tramps is a book which I started reading. It keeps you engrossed throughout when you read it. And I'm quite sure that all the participants, not only on this and the YouTube, will buy this book. It will be quite helpful to have a different perspective. And Justice Wimbla, we are so enamored that you logged in so we always remember you for your sessions. But joining in in the session shows your passion towards understanding and moving forward. And needless to say, 
we are also thankful to Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt, who gave a session which was precise, concise, and incise. We'd always been indebted for him. Everyone stay safe, stay blessed. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.